computer. And suddenly I say, hey, you guys, I've got a great idea. <laughs> and we look at it and go, oh, no. <laughs> so that was Lou. But, uh, He's from Chicago, Lou, yeah. Uh, he, he, he formed that company with uh, Harold Robbins and Quincy Jones and a uh, film director called Don Jocelyn. I think they were all from the same part of Chicago. And they formed a, uh, a multimedia company called Symbolic. And uh, they flew the eyes of blue out to New York. I think that was in 68 to play for the launch of the company. That was quite an experience. That was the first time I went to America. And I think we were the first South Wales band to actually get to the States. That was great. That was in the Nepenthe Club in New York. And we stayed at the Warwick Hotel. I can remember walking into the foyer of the, of the Warwick Hotel and like um, booking in and the elevator door opened on the way up to, to take us up to the room and Cary Grant walked out to the lift. <laughs> we were standing there, you know, kind of sort of six, five really green kind of Welsh boys, you know, from the, from, from the provinces of, of industrial South Wales and you suddenly find yourself in New York, you book into this huge kind of skyscraper hotel, you know, taking your bags up to the room, the lift opens, and Cary Grant walks out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's before we took any drugs as well. So it wasn't an hallucination. But, uh, and, and then on the way down, you know, there's people like uh, Paul McCartney staying there, you know, it was absolutely mind-blowing. So Lou did, some of Lou's ideas were pretty good. He did turn us on to a lot of great experiences. You know, that was one of them. We met Miriam McKeeba on that tour and ended up working with Miriam about a year or 18 months after and we met um, I met a lot of people I mean meeting Harold Robbins was incredible you know mm -hmm. I mean, Harold was like one of the characters out of one of his own books you know and he said, you know he said to us in the party if you guys need any money come over to my hotel I think he was staying over on Fifth Avenue, you know. So of course we run out of money after about three days. <laughs> so we all up and off over to Harrow's Hotel. Well, of course he had the kind of three or four floors. It's a huge kind of business concern, Harold Robbins, mm -hmm. think, lawyers and everything. We plunked ourselves there, you know. And I can remember him coming out of some meeting, being trailed by about sort of fifteen business lawyers and things. And you know, he said. Hi, Harold. All right. Do you remember us? He said we could come over if, if you run out of money. I said, oh, yeah, you guys. So uh, the, these lawyers, and they looked really stupid at us. And, and at Har Har but Harold Robbins, he, you know, I must say it, he was the type of guy that he didn't kind of, there was no front to him, you know, although he was running a big business organization. He actually said, yeah, how much do you want? <laughs> Yeah, hundred dollars each. <laughs> it sounded really stupid and green, you know. So he got one of the lawyers. He didn't have any cash on him, of course, you know. He got one of the lawyers. He was really freaked his lawyers out, giving these kind of little Welsh bums money, you know, and this kind of fire, this expensive hotel. That was quite funny as well. But uh, several other things happened on that tour. We were there for eight days. Very weird things happened on that tour as well.